Guess what time it is? It is time for Moon Kitty to talk about warrior cats. Unironically, every time I make a video where I simply talk about the cats, everybody's like, please, Moon Kitty, talk at me more. I desire your feelings about cats. To which I say, well, sure, okay. A long while ago, I detailed what I called a canon hierarchy. Essentially, the idea was I wanted to assign some books priority over others when it comes to contradictory events. For example, if a super edition said Pikestar's mate is Lily Stem, but a main series book says it's Woodfur, I would say that Woodfur was the canon option unless later a main series book says otherwise, because I consider the main series to take priority over the super editions. Similarly, I consider that the new books and their information take priority over the older books and their information. This is because when we go forward with that information, they're more likely to be taking from the more recent books and not the old ones. But something I wanted to go into more detail with was specifically these contradictions. Over the years, we've gotten quite a few retcons and changes to already written storylines. There's basically two types of retcon in Warrior Cats. The first would be an in-book retcon, where an earlier book says one thing and a later book contradicts it. The second would be an outside retcon, where one book will say or imply one thing, and a statement from an author, an interview, or a website asset will say something else. I've actually wanted to go over this for a while, so let's start with the in-book retcons. Because you're all familiar, and have begged me to talk about it to the ends of the earth for the past two years, I'll start with Dovewing's eyes. The first thing I should mention is that her eyes are green in all of her official art. That's the cover of the book, her character portrait from one of the field guides, and the cover of the new book. The first time they're brought up, they are described as golds, which uh, can basically be thrown in the garbage can with every other first book mistake a character gets. The eyes start being called blue in Fading Echoes. They stay blue until The Apprentice's Quest, where they are green, and then they're blue in Thunder and Shadow, and then they're green again in Shattered Sky, and every book after that forever up until now. Honestly, and please believe me, I do not care what color Dovewing's eyes are. It does not anger me to see Dovewing with funny eye colors or blue eyes. But this is a retcon, it is a contradiction, Dovewing's eye color between Omen of the Stars and A Vision of Shadows is a change, and it's been done. So canonically, because it's both recent and consistent, they're green. But if this was 2013 right now, I would be saying the eyes are canonically blue. But Dovewing's eye color is something meaningless. It changes nothing about the story, so it's an excusable retcon. I'm sure the reason that this happened in the first place was because of the consistently green character artwork. Dovewing's eyes were largely green in the eyes of readers, even though they were never called so. Additionally, tons of early fan art also made her eyes green, completely ignoring the canon blueness. Making her eyes match her character art, seeing as most cat's eyes do, with the exception of maybe chubby Crowfeather, was a pretty good decision for character consistency on the editor's part. Now, one of the retcons that most people are familiar with is Redtail's debt. In the first series, Oakheart, the RiverClan deputy, dies from a falling rock. It's really important because Tigerstar lies to his clan about Redtail killing Oakheart as part of his cover-up story for his murder of Redtail. But in Redtail's debt, Redtail actually kills Oakheart. I'm guessing this change came about because of questionable research. I'm assuming that whoever plotted out Redtail's debt looked at the first book and looked at Tigerstar's description of how Redtail died instead of actually reading the whole book. Because of this change and also Ravenpaw's weird behavior, a lot of people see this and go, okay, yeah, sure, the first series was right and this book is just weird. Yellowfang's Secret, Blue Star's Prophecy, and Crooked Star's Promise are all prequel books that happen around the same time, so they all have little problems in between each other. Alongside Yellowfang's Secret directly conflicting with the climax of the first ever Warrior Cats book and giving Yellowfang superpowers that definitely weren't thought of when writing the first series. Honestly, when I read the first series of Warrior Cats, I am reading it with the thought in my head that it is existing in a completely parallel universe to those prequel books. Additionally, more recent books have had trouble properly recalling the events of older ones. For example, and going forward this will probably always be considered a mistake, in The Broken Code, Tigerstar 2 is implied to have not seen the great battle against the Dark Forest, despite him having been personally a Dark Forest trainee. But it's really hard to say, especially when we could just assume that the authors are being unfamiliar with the first four series. Something you have to remember is that the plots were written almost entirely by Vicky until the second book of Dawn of the Clans, where a new team took over. And while I would expect these authors to be on some level familiar with the material they're working with, mistakes happen. 
We also have a billion concepts that just feel forgotten. Pretty much every StarClan-specific fact that we got in Omen of the Stars is never mentioned again. That includes things like fading and characters appearing as they were happiest in their life. Something else I consider definitely a retcon is One Star's Secret Baby Darktail, and while I do like this twist, and I am completely within my rights to do so, it is clearly not something that was thought of until this arc. Well, until the arc of Vision of Shadows, not this current arc. It was created just to give Darktail a backstory, and an arc before One Star having a secret kitty pet romance arc wasn't even a thought in an author's head. On the subject of One Star, people try to claim that his behavior upon becoming leader is a retcon, but his behavior change is noticed in-universe and given a motivation, so I could never see it as unreasonable. What I do consider an unreasonable change in behavior is a cat where I feel completely, totally had his character retconned. Breeze Pelt is a very defined character in Omen of the Stars. He's angry about his father's other children, he's angry with Wind Clan, he wants to get revenge on the clans by fighting with the Dark Forest until the end, and he is one of two cats who do this. He even stands over Hollyleaf's corpse, glad that she's dead, and said Lion Blaze and Jayfeather will be next. Then, in Dovewing Silence, what is an epilogue to Omen of the Stars, they make it clear that Breeze Pelt is still a threat. They make it seem like it's a problem or a fluke that he's being forgiven with the rest of the cats and that he's smug that he's getting away with it. This very obviously leads to an anticipation that Breeze Pelt will be a reoccurring problem or a serious villain. And finally, a villain with some sort of actual backstory and purpose. A villain that maybe we can have a bit of sympathy for even though he's a naughty, naughty cat. And in Crowfeather's trial, he just becomes a normal warrior. His behaviors and attempted murders are never properly addressed, and the whole thing is framed as if the clan was bullying some misguided child, and not somebody who was legitimately plotting their downfall. The sorts of things that really angered Breeze Pelt and pushed him to the edge, like his involvement with the Dark Forest, or his relationship with Broken Star, who encouraged him to be angry with his father and his father's other family, those things are completely forgotten, and it's just twisted into a story about Crowfeather's affection and attention towards his son. He doesn't really act like himself, he doesn't really do anything wrong, and he isn't redeemed, because the book acts like he never needed to be. It's like stepping into an alternate universe where it's Breeze Pelt opposite day. And I would have loved a Breeze Pelt redemption! But him waking up good one day and everyone just needing to accept that and ignore and get over his abuse towards them is... weird. Redemption requires some sort of effort or self-realization, but the effort and self-realization within Breeze Pelt just isn't there. So I consider this another situation in which the people who plotted out Crowfeather's trial didn't really have a good grasp on Breeze Pelt's behavior during Omen of the Stars. Which I guess is kind of sad, because because of Crowfeather's trial, we cannot have a Breeze Pelt redemption story or a Breeze Pelt villain story. He's just kind of been regulated to this sort of bad character in the background, and that that's just kind of upsetting to me. Another really blatant retcon is the random disappearance and replacement of the River Clan apprentices Cypress Paw and Wave Paw. These two cats were named after Blog Clan members Cypress Wind and Wave Splash, respectively, by the owner of Blog Clan and writer under the Aaron Hunter title, Kate Carey. But by the next book, both she-cats have vanished and there's new River Clan apprentices in their place. And this could be lack of communication between authors, but it could also just be the editors changing things. Either way, these are two cats that were just completely removed from existence, which is pretty rare for warrior cats. There's another really blatant mistake in Vision of Shadows, where the roles of background cats Slatefur and Ripletail get swapped between the main series and the book Tigerheart Shadow. In Tigerheart Shadow, Ripletail is a cat who goes missing, but at the end rejoins Shadow Clan. But in the main series, Ripletail is a cat who goes missing and becomes a kitty pet named Buster. Kate Carey has said that the cat intended to be brought home by Tigerheart as Slate Fur, and I consider the main series to trump the super editions, but that's quite the mistake. But we've got a pretty easy explanation for this. Tigerheart Shadow, where Tigerheart comes home with Ripletail, and I say Tigerheart, I mean Tigerheart's corpse. When Tigerheart's corpse comes home with River with Ripletail, that is in a book written by Kate Carey. When Tigerheart's corpse comes home with Slatefur, that's in a book written by Cherith Baldry. Additionally, with it being unlikely that the authors read the other person's books before they're published, and 
with them being published so close together, I'd imagine that they were written at the same time, with the slate for a ripple tail problem just getting all mixed up in it. And sure, okay, you could say the editor should have picked this up. But at least we have an explanation as to why it happened at all. But true retcons, where the books are actually edited and published in later editions with the edits, are super, super rare. For example, Graystripe saying his children are Stonefur and Mistyfoot, and then that being edited so he's not saying that anymore, that's not a retcon, that's just, you know, fixing a very blatant, very obvious mistake in the series. But there is a retcon. There is one confusing, concerning retcon where it's just an edit, and later editions have a totally different thing going on than earlier ones. And the reason this is so baffling to me is because it affects nothing. It doesn't do anything. In fact, it actually makes less sense than the initial draft. But first, I think I need to give you some context. Throughout Omen of the Stars, they're making it pretty clear that Blossomfall and Thornclaw have something going on, or at least that Blossomfall has a crush on him. And you may be thinking to yourself, wait, I thought Blossom Thorn came out of nowhere, and you'd be wrong, because it's actually hinted at pretty early in the series. But either way, there's a scene in The Last Hope where Lionblaze watches Blossomfall and Thornclaw play fighting. He mistakes them for mates before realizing, oh wait, no, they're actually training in the Dark Forest together. But in reprinted books, Thornclaw is completely replaced with Mouse Whisker. Then, later, Blossomfall has kits with Thornclaw anyways, so nice try, I guess, Mouse Whisker. It could have been that they just didn't want to imply that Thornclaw was training in the Dark Forest and just replaced him with some other single Tom, but... Later, in the epilogue to Omen of the Stars, Dovewing Silence, both Mouse Whisker and Thornclaw are listed as having trained in the Dark Forest regardless, so it makes the whole change kind of confusing. And it would be weird to me that they would want to remove this for its romantic context, because we had already previously had Blossomfall doing things like imitating Thornclaw and acting like she was interested in Thornclaw, and then later she has his kits, so it's not like changing this one scene with the two of them changes that quote-unquote romance narrative. So this is a change in a book, and I don't know why it happened at all. <laughs> Curiously, when I was looking into this just to see if anybody else had, like, scanned the books or anything or put, like, any pictures side by side, I noticed that the wiki doesn't even really mention this change. Which is odd, because I'd imagine they'd be on top of it. They just say the scene includes Thornclaw, and they don't even mention it on Mouse Whiskers' page. The retcons that bother me the most, though, are the ones from outside book sources. Particularly the ones about family relations. <laughs> and you might be thinking, hmm, there's nothing wrong with just adding a few parents, right? And I disagree. With my entire heart and soul, I disagree. Take Sandstorm, for example. Sandstorm, in the first series, clearly has no parents. It didn't matter very much in the first series where any of these cats came from. Every single one of them was invented almost completely separately from each other. I don't even think a cat says, that's my brother, or that's my dad, about another ThunderClan cat, of course, unless they had the kittens during the first series. Graystripe mentions having a mother, but not by name. But author retcons have since tried to tell us that Sandstorm's parents are Redtail and Brindleface, two cats who we see the funerals for, both of which she blatantly doesn't attend. Brindleface's living, apprentice-age kittens, are even given a chance to get revenge on the dogs, something not mentioned to Sandstorm, who supposedly would have been her child. This all seems wrong to me. Sandstorm isn't somebody who would ignore her parents, and if we were to say it's a for sure fact that these cats were her parents, we would be changing some assumed qualities of her character. We would be giving Sandstorm some level of resentment for her parents that can't be read in the original text. And poor Brindleface herself becomes the star of all sorts of problems. If you make Sandstorm her daughter, you make Ash for Scrollflight's uncle. Additionally, a lot of people say, but Dustpelt was Ferncloud's uncle, when you mention this. And again, only if you believe in retcons. The parentage of these cats was all made up after the fact. It's never mentioned in the books. And again, with poor Brindleface, another common retcon is making Whitestorm the father of her litter of kits. This is probably done because at some point, like any responsible senior warrior would, Whitestorm mentions that her kits hadn't been apprenticed yet. They fail to realize that before and during this event, we have mention of Whitestorm courting and being mates with Willowpelt. 
Now, you could say, oh, this was the first series. They were looser with cat relationships, except one. No, they actually weren't. There was no mention or implication of that in the first series, beyond the fact that kits existing at all were largely used as plot devices instead of being characters. In fact, the way every on-screen romance is handled literally disproves this idea. They were just as rigid as they ever were in the first series. And two, if you're arguing that it was a different time situation, you should be acknowledging that back then, the idea that Whitestorm could have fathered those kits didn't exist in the heads of the authors or on the page. Meanwhile, making Whitestorm a cat who would move on or cheat while his kits were still in the nursery is just weird and, again, out of character for him. It creates implications for Whitestorm that shouldn't be there. Another one that lasted way too long was the idea that Graystripe's parents were Patchpelt and Willowpelt full siblings. <laughs> this was considered canon by Warrior Cats fans for years and years and years before Patchpelt was left out by the information on the new Warrior Cats website family tree. In less than a week, we're about to see the release of the book Graystripe's Vow, a book whose preview has already canonized Willowpelt as Graystripe's mother, which I guess I can live with, but please, please don't say Patchpelt's name ever again. Aside from parents, outside source retcons like the family tree have given kids names who didn't have them or didn't even exist before. Uh, but because all of these kids died, it really doesn't matter whether or not they had names anyways, so it's fine. And plus, some of the kit names are cute. I like Tulip Kit for one of Ashfur and Ferncloud siblings. I really don't mind if these things are real or not. Overall, I just want things to be left as they are. I don't need to know who anyone's mother is to be satisfied with warrior cats, especially when every change you make causes every cat to be a little bit more directly related to each other than before. Additionally, if you add things to characters' backstories, you're going to change the way you think about the way they act in later life. I mentioned earlier on that I actually like that Darktail is One Star's son. That said, giving one star a secret family and a kitty pet problem kind of adds a different scope on the way he acted going forward. It's no longer just, oh, one star was trying to be a respectable leader. It's, oh, one star was trying to be a respectable leader and also cover up the fact that he has kitty pet babies. <laughs>